I've spent eight years in data analytics. And I have my master's degree in business analytics. But even with so many educational resources available, I've seen people struggle to get hired. And it's not because they lack the skills, it's because they don't know what actually matters. Today, I'm gonna give you nine minutes of completely unhinged, brutally honest advice that'll save you years of joblessness. These are the lessons that I wish I knew when I was first starting out. And some of these might actually piss you off, but if you can't handle the truth, you're probably not gonna make it in tech anyways. And you can trust me because many of my students have landed six figure roles following this advice. And don't forget to subscribe because I know you want to. Number one, I need you to really lock in here and listen to me when I say this. You do not need another certification because the truth is that employers don't actually care about your certifications. A piece of paper doesn't actually prove anything. It doesn't prove that you learned the right things. It doesn't prove that you have the skills. It just proves that you completed a program. And think about it. The employers that are in industry are so disconnected from what's going on in academia and all these boot camps and certifications. They don't care what you're doing in these programs. They care if you have the right skills and can make an impact on their team and their business. So you have to stop relying on all of these certifications, thinking they're gonna magically get you a job and instead learn how to speak the business language. That way you can align with the hiring manager and get them to hire you. I see so many people literally collecting certifications and just thinking, oh, I just need one more. I just need one more. And guess what? That cycle is never gonna end unless you end it yourself. Certifications are really good to help you feel good and feel prepared and feel like you did something, but they don't actually have very much weight on the job market. One of my students actually took a $10,000 boot camp and he graduated from it. He got the certification, but he still couldn't get a job. And the reason why is because employers don't care about your stupid little certifications. They care if you have the right skills and you have a portfolio and you can demonstrate that you have the skills. And after only a few months of working with me, he's upskilled, built a portfolio, and now he's getting recruiters flooding his inbox every day, which is great for him now, but also sucks that he spent $10,000 on this boot camp that employers don't care about. Number two, and this one might sound a little harsh, so make sure you buckle up. If you're transitioning careers into data analytics and you're not getting any interviews, it's not because you're overqualified. I hear so many people be like, oh, I'm not getting any interviews. I think it's because I'm overqualified because I have 20 years of experience in XYZ. And I'm just like, bestie, you're not overqualified. You're not getting any interviews because you're actually underqualified. I think sometimes when people are transitioning from another career and they already have experience in some other corporate role or some other industry or whatever, they think that they're not getting interviews and data because they have too much experience and they're overqualified. But in my opinion, I think that's just a cop out and not taking accountability for learning the right skills and getting yourself ready for the position. Because the truth is that if you were really well qualified and selling yourself well for that role, you would be getting interviews even in a bad job market. So if you're one of those people who keeps saying that you're overqualified and that's why you're not getting interviews, let me ask you real quick. Do you have all the right skills? Do you have a good portfolio built up? Have you been practicing for interviews? Have you been networking? What's your LinkedIn page look like? If all of those things are not flawless, then I promise you, you have some work to do. And I know the job market is bad right now, but focus on the things that you can control. By the way, if you're serious about breaking into data analytics, grab my three-step data analytics roadmap below. It's completely free and breaks down all the steps you need to do to break into data. Number three, you have no business learning Python until you know SQL really, really well. Every time I have people come to me and they're like, Jess, I wanna break into data analytics. I just started this Python course. I'm like, why? Why are you learning Python? Do you know SQL super well? Because you have no business learning Python until you can write really good SQL queries. Because the truth is that SQL is the one universal coding data language that almost every company uses. A lot of companies pretend like they use Python. They'll put it in the job description. They'll talk it up in interviews. And then you get in the company and you realize most of the data work is done in SQL and Excel. And chances are you're not gonna use Python, especially for an entry level role. It definitely depends on the company, but unless the company is big enough to have resources that support it, most companies are just using SQL out there. So it's better to focus on what's gonna give you the biggest ROI on your job search, which is SQL. Because if you can't pull data from a database and transform it and understand basic data principles, how are you gonna be doing machine learning and really intricate data visualization in Python? The answer is that you shouldn't be. And again, I'm not saying don't learn Python. It's a great skill to know as well, but I'm just saying you shouldn't be focusing your time on Python if you don't already have SQL mastered. Because SQL is also what's gonna show up in your interview. Sometimes you might have a Python interview, but it's pretty rare for data analytics because they mostly wanna make sure that you can work in SQL and pull data from the database and clean it and transform it and all that stuff. Number four, if your data analytics portfolio looks like a school assignment or a complete newbie, you're cooked. 
That means if you just give off a really bad first impression and give off a few signals that you're a newbie and don't really know what you're doing, that's gonna immediately turn away a hiring manager. And there's some really obvious signs of that, like what kind of data you use for your projects. If you're using the Titanic or the Iris data sets or the COVID-19 data set or a Pokemon data set, they're gonna be like, wow, is that the only project you have? Because those are the most basic cliche projects that are all over the internet and they have nothing to do with an actual business. So honestly, they're gonna assume that you haven't worked on any better projects and you might've even just copied that project from online. Because if you had worked in an actual business and worked on real business problems, that would probably be in your portfolio, right? So if your portfolio is filled with really basic data sets and classic learning projects, it's honestly just gonna make you look really bad. Instead, come up with something more creative and come up with your own business problems. You can actually use ChatGPT to make custom data sets for your industry. Not only is that gonna be much more realistic and memorable, but it's also gonna show the hiring manager that you understand business problems problems in their industry, which is gonna get you hired way more quickly than using the Titanic data sets. Number five, you're ruining all of your chances by downplaying yourself in interviews. I always see people on social media and in my DMs and they say, I just want someone to take a chance on me. I just wanna break in a data. I'm looking for my first data job. And you know what? That literally makes you sound like a complete newbie who's totally desperate. And you know what? Even if that's true, we've all been there before. We've all been a complete newbie looking for that first big break, that first data job, but you don't wanna look like that on the job market. So if you ever say the phrases, I just want someone to take a chance on me. I'm looking to break into data. I'm a really fast learner. Just know that there is like a 0% chance that you're going to move on in the interview process. Because once you say those words, a recruiter and hiring manager are going to know that you've no experience and they're going to move on to someone else. Because at that point, if you've no experience and you're desperate and not confident, literally anyone else will be better than you. So what you're going to do is you're going to fake your confidence. You're going to show up with a big smile and you're just going to cosplay being confident. Even if you don't feel confident. Even if you have a crazy amount of imposter syndrome and you don't feel like you're ready, you're just going to pretend and you're not going to say any of those phrases that downplay you, your skills, and your experience. Instead, you're going to highlight all of the learning and projects you've been working on and connect the dots from your past experience, whatever it may be, to the job that you're interviewing for. And you're going to get really good at being confident in interviews and eventually one is going to stick and you'll get hired. So stop ruining your chances by making yourself sound like a complete newbie. Look, most people won't tell you any of this stuff because it's uncomfortable, but now you know better. And if you want my complete three-step data analytics roadmap that's helped thousands of people break into data analytics, grab it below and download it now. It covers everything from skills, your portfolio, and your network all the way to land that first role. So don't waste years of your career figuring things out the hard way like I did. Learn from my mistakes. Sending you lots of big data energy. Bye.